you off from giving your God-given gift to the world. So uh, grand rising, rich rising to everyone. Um, I have some, uh, for those of you who are new to us, um, you, we're reading Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets and Mastering Money Manifestation in Your Mind. And um, and uh, you can go get the book at moneyandmanifestation.com. You can go get the book at moneyandmanifestation.com. All right. And so uh, that is there. Uh, you get five copies for the price of one, five copies for the price of one. If you go to amazon.com and try to get this book right now, it's one copy for $100. If you go to moneyandmanifestation.com, which should be pinned on YouTube and on Instagram, uh, you will get five copies of the book. Yes, five copies of the book. One for you, four for you to give away to other people. Um, and that what that does is that stimulates your personal economy. As you give, so you shall receive. So the reason many of you aren't receiving enough is because you aren't giving enough at this stage of your life. So um, all, is, all is well. You also get the Rituals Workbook. You get the rituals workbook, right, which is all the exercises at the end of each chapter to anchor these principles into your life. And you also get the audio book. But we are here 830 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. Uh, we are deep into the book. We are actually on page 339 today. We're on 339 today. Um, we're getting very close to the end. Um, and uh, based on what we uh, discussed together, we'll likely just start the book over. We'll likely start the book over once we get to the end and keep on going because we know that the subconscious mind is reprogrammed through what? Through repetition. And so even as I read the book over and over and over again, um, I'm reminded, I'm reminded, reminded, right, of these principles. And I'm able to look at money in a brand new way. Uh, you think about the Bible. It's not like that book has changed. Actually, that book has changed a lot. Um, but in general, you know, people are teaching from that same book over and over and over again. This is uh it can take a lifetime to truly adopt and accept all of the principles that are in here. But I know that uh, with each one that you adopt, right, and take into your life, um, I know that it will change the outward picturing or your experience, right? Your heaven on earth. Heaven is your the greatest good you can see for yourself and others, right, in your mind. It's your mental experience of life. And earth is your material experience of life. And we are meant to bring heaven on earth. That's what we're here to do. We're literally here to bring heaven on earth, family. OK, heaven is not some place you go to after you die. We're literally here to experience it right here and right now. You will do even greater things than these. The kingdom of heaven is in your midst. It's in the here and now. Right. It's right there. But religion has convinced people otherwise. And so they think that death is better than life. That's just so twisted. They think that death is better than life, like that. You're supposed to be here to suffer. And then once you die, you're supposed to have some heaven with pearly gates and things of that nature up there. and. uh uh, we're here to change that because um, that is so false, so false. Like it's it's such a blatant, like in your face lie that some people actually believed it. And if you repeat something enough times, people start to accept it as true. All right. So uh, what's beautiful today, we are actually here on commandment number nine. We've been going through the 10 money commandments that are in the book. And we're actually on commandment number nine today. And that is how the rich and righteous attract money and wealth want versus need and we are about to read one of the most powerful chapters in the book um right now and the it is on page 340 and it is thou shall not want thou shall not want all right um you've heard that in psalms 23 1 thou shall not want we actually have nine pages to read today so um i'm going to get into it now okay so we're on page 340 we're on page 340 and uh, and uh, I'm going to begin with today's scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want Psalms 23, 1. OK, the Bible says thou shall not want Psalm 23, 1. When you want something, you stay in a state of wanting. As Michael Beckwith says, the universe hears I want as I don't have. Everybody type I want equals I don't have. Everybody type, I want equals I don't have. It literally just says, I shall not want. But yet, here we go out in the world. Oh, I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. I'm going to give you the alternative in just a second. I'll give you the alternative in just a second. But I want to the universe. It sounds like a beautiful thing. Yes, here are my desires. Here's what I want. Sounds like a good thing. But it literally translates as I don't have. 
This is why scripture says thou shall not want. You probably never heard it like this before. Okay. This is due to the feeling of lack behind the wanting, longing, yearning, thirsting, and craving. Yesterday, there are many people that were in want, right? I want love. I want a partner, right? Valentine's Day. Want, 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 want. And this is part of the reason why they don't have is because they're in a state of wanting when scripture has literally told us plain and clear, thou shall not want. Sheep don't want. Listen, sheep don't want because they trust that their shepherd knows their needs. Sheep do not want because they trust that the shepherd knows their needs. Matthew 6, 8 says your father knows what you need before you ask him. So if you really trust your mother, father, God, then you should never be in a state of wanting. Your mother, father, God knows that you have needs. Your mother, father, God knows that you need food. Your mother, father, God knows that you need money. Your mother, father, God knows that you want purpose-driven work. Your mother, father, God knows that you need support. But if you don't trust that, then you go out there and start seeking it for yourself. Okay? The same is true for you and your mother, father, God, when you trust that all your needs will be met. Wealth consciousness, remember? Wealth consciousness is when you realize I am, when you realize I am and I already have. I am and I already have. Don't say I want to be a millionaire. How many of you want to be a millionaire? How many of you want to be a millionaire? You remember that show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Instead, affirm I am a millionaire. I want communicates that you don't have it, that it's not close to you and that somebody else has to give it to you. Something outside of you has to give it to you. Instead, you affirm, I am a millionaire. Your reality corresponds to your identity. Put another way, your reality responds to the core of who you are. This is why you get who you are, not what you want. Everybody type that. I get who I am, not who I want, well, not what I want. I get who I am not what I want. I get who I am, not what I want. I get who I am, not what I want. I get who I am, not what I want. I get who I am, not what I want. I need you to understand that. This is the power of I am. This is the power of I already have. It must be here. I just have not been able to grab it with my mental faculties and therefore haven't been able to grab it with my mind yet. But it is already here. Everything that I desire is already here. There's nothing new under the sun. That man or that woman that you, what? For those of you who were single on Valentine's Day, guess what? He or she is already here. They're already here. And guess what? They are already yours. They are already yours. Not only are they already here, they are already yours. But guess what? In your desire, in your wanting, some of you have filled space with people who are not yours. The significant other, the man or woman that you wanted, for those who were wanting to be with somebody on Valentine's Day, they are already here. They are already born. They're already here. But in our wantingness and in our loneliness, some of us have filled space with other people who are not yours. And so now how can you get what you desired when you fill the space with something that doesn't belong to you? Your space is filled. So he or she can't even get into your life because your space, space is filled with something that you substituted. You had a substitute, you have a substitute partner right now. Some of you have substitute partners right now. And you know it. You have a substitute partner a substitute boyfriend, a substitute girlfriend. It's a substitute and you know it. So now how now you've made it harder. We talked about making it easy for God to give to you. Now you've made it harder for God to give to you that which was already yours, but you just didn't have the faith to trust. You were in a state of wanting. We're on paragraph two, page 340. I don't want anything. Listen, I don't want anything because I already have everything. 
I don't want anything from God. I don't go to God begging for anything because I already have everything. How can you want something you already know is yours? The only difference between a possibility and a possession is time, belief, and action. The only difference between a possibility and a possession is time, belief, and action. You feeling that it is not already yours is exactly what is keeping it from being yours. As John 16, 15 says, all that belongs to the Father is mine. All that belongs to the Father is mine. When you want, you chase. When you don't want it, it chases you. Rather than praying on the thing you desire, pray to become what the thing desires. Bars. Listen to that again. Rather than praying, as in going after, like animals prey on other animals, rather than praying on the thing that you desire, pray to become what the thing desires. So rather than praying for more money, family, I hope you're getting this. Rather than praying for more money and chasing it, because many of you out here paper chasing because you want money, how about you pray to become what the thing desires? How about you just become what it desires so now it's chasing you? You aren't chasing it. It is now chasing you because you are becoming what it desires without compromising your values. You never want to conform in such a way to get something and it compromises your values or causes you to lose who you are. But you are praying to become a magnet. This is why they call it business magnets. People who have many businesses, they call them business magnets. Why? Because magnet, the other word for magnet, right, spelled differently, is something that is attractive. Problem solvers are attractive to money. Service-oriented people are attracted. Money is attracted to them. Okay? Are y'all with me? We're on the top of page 341. We got a lot of pages to cover today, so I'm going to keep on pushing. Anything you want must become. Anything you want, you must become. When you become it, it comes to be. When you become it, it comes to be. You want love? Then be loving. You want wealth? Then be wealthy. You want happiness? Then be happy. It is the opposite of what we were taught. You don't need money to be wealthy, but being wealthy will draw money unto you. I don't want money, stored energy, because I'm already positive, productive energy in action, and therefore money wants me. You thought I got all this money by wanting it? No, I don't want money, which is stored energy, because I am already positive, productive energy in action. Therefore, money actually wants me. Because this stored energy wants to be used. It wants to be transmuted into something. And when it sees a vessel like myself that is positive, productive energy, guess what? It wants to come to me. It wants to come to me. It does not want to stay. This energy does not want to be locked in this form. It does not want to be locked in the form of flat cotton. It is not useful in this capacity. I can't, I can't drink it. I can't drink it. I can't eat it. It is not useful here. So it is actually looking for vessels to enter into or come to that will turn it into positive, productive energy in action. Money wants me. I don't want money. Money is coming into my gravitational pool. I'm not being sucked into it. When I'm being sucked into money's gravitational pool, that means that money is more powerful than me. It has become my master. No. I'm the master of money. Paragraph two, page 341. Do you realize that money needs you too? It is a reciprocal relationship in the same way that Legos need a kid to put them together, uh, put them together to become something greater. In the same way, excuse me, in the same way that Lego need a kid to put them together to become something greater, money needs you to become something greater. The stored energy is just potential energy. Money wants me because it hates sitting around doing nothing and being unproductive in a savings account and knows I will put it into action. Who would you rather date? 
Let's look at let's look at money. Let's personify money. Who would you rather date? Someone who keeps you locked up at the house and never takes you anywhere, or someone who gives you the freedom and takes you out on adventures? Who would you rather date, family? Just think about money as a person, right? Let's think about this name. This guy's name is Ben. Who would Ben rather date? Somebody who wants to keep him in the house doing nothing all day long, or somebody who takes him out and circulates him and shows him off to the world? Money wants to fulfill a potential beyond being a piece of paper or symbol. You are Aladdin, and money is your genie in a bank instead of a bottle. You have the power to make it come, uh, make it come alive and tell it what to do. It is useless unless you use it, and it needs a conscious being to give it consciousness. We have misunderstood desire and therefore demonized it. Yet desire is a key ingredient to manifestation. Desire is one of the most highly charged emotional states. Desire out of alignment with God is lust, and desire in alignment with God is love. Desire out of alignment with God is lust, and desire in alignment with God is love. Love is a positive, healthy, emotional desire that comes from within. Lust is a negative, unhealthy, emotional desire that comes from without. We want to move in love, which is actually our default state of being. As the notorious B.I.G. said, only make moves when your heart is in it and sky's the limit. One of the keys to fulfilling the desire you have is getting full of the feeling first. This is what full feel meant means. Everybody type full, F-U-L-L, hyphen, feel, F-E-E-L, hyphen, meant, M-E-N-T. Full, feel, meant. You are fulfilled when you get full of the feeling. When you get full of the feeling, everything we desire is usually connected to a feeling we want. You have to feel wealthy within the present moment before you can feel wealthy externally. You must claim it in your mind before you can claim it, claim that it is mine. You must claim it in your mind before you can claim that it is mine. Get it in your head, which is your thinking, and heart, which is your feeling, so that you get it in your hand, which is your having. Most people think that it is the other way around. They believe that having money will make them feel rich. This is more diff this is more difficult path to prosperity. You can access the feeling of riches right where you are through the power of your imagination. You don't have to wait to feel, you don't have to wait to feel unless you feel like waiting. You don't have to wait to feel unless you feel like waiting. You don't have to wait to feel unless you feel like waiting. Rather than thinking I will be happy when I graduate, when I get a job, when I make six figures, when I get married, when I buy a house, when I have kids, when I retire, the secret is to be and feel happy now in the present moment and thus attract happy experiences into your life. When you, some of you are trying to go get in a relationship to be happy. It is the opposite. How about you get happy first within yourself and it'll be easier for you to attract a healthy relationship. Because if you actually go into that relationship to be happy, then now you are stepped into a codependent relationship. Whereas if you are happy independently, you had enough, enough self-love independently, then you Coming together with someone only multiplies the love or draws more of the love and happiness out of you. It's not somebody putting happiness in you or even giving you their happiness. What they are doing, what a healthy partner does is they create an environment for more happiness, more joy, more love, more peace to come out of you. It did not come from them. They are like a gardener and they created a safe space in this relationship. You co-created it with each other, a safe space for more self-love, happiness, joy to come from without of you. Because nobody's giving you anything. 
When you use the language pattern, I'll be happy when, you're subconsciously, you're subconsciously suggesting that you are not happy now and that happiness is only in some distant future when this thing hopefully happens. That thought process will keep you in a state of unhappiness no matter how much you achieve in life because there will always be something up to grasp for. The law of attraction responds to feelings and the beautiful thing about feelings is that we can access them right now. Whatever you can conjure up in your imagination must then become a fascination, right? Fascination, spelled differently, fasten, right? You fasten to something because you conjured it up in your mind. To fasten or secure up something mentally is the first step to manifesting it materially. Top of page 343. The truth is that you don't desire more money. How can pieces of green, flat cotton paper help you? Most people want freedom or security and they think that money is the best way to acquire those feelings. In truth, you want what you think money will get you, and you want the feeling that whatever money can get you will give you. Everybody is looking for ways to convert their money into something greater. Otherwise, it is just sitting there doing nothing except providing a false sense of security. We inherently know that money is worthless. That is why we happily exchange our money for products and services that we think are more valuable than money all of the time. Just, just be honest with, me, honest with me right now. How many tabs of online stores do you have open right now? How many tabs of online stores do you have open right now? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay cool y'all doing good y'all doing good you're not seeking outside of yourself all right second paragraph page 343 for everything that you think you want i encourage you to ask yourself what is the feeling i think this thing will give me you got a new outfit in your cart what is the feeling that you think this thing will give you? You got a juicer in your cart. What do you think the feeling is that the thing will give you? You have a book in your cart. What is the feeling that you think that thing will actually give you? Once you do that, you will have uncovered your true values. And now your desire is no longer about having things. Instead, your desire is about being who you truly are. And there is no greater desire than that. The cars and the clothes will change. The beaches will start to look the same. The palate, your palate will adjust to higher end food. But the desire to be who you are, fully self-expressed, will never go away. If you only half want it, you won't have it. If you only half, as in 50% want it, you won't have it. If you need it, you will receive it. I don't believe in having a plan B. I commit to plan A 100%. And if that doesn't work, I create a second plan A. I do not split my divine energy, the greatest currency that is within me, greater than this currency. This is why employers are willing to, willing to pay this for your time and your body. Why? Because this is the greatest currency in the world. The energy, the given energy that is in your body is the greatest currency in the world. And many of you are trading it at Costco wholesale prices to employers who are not aligned with your purpose. So they're literally using your energy on discount. You gave them a Black Friday deal on your God-given energy. Do you realize that all your needs, everything you need, you have? You don't have everything you want, but you notice that you get everything that you need. So you want to know what the secret is, family? You have to make your wants into needs. You have to turn your wants into needs. That's the secret. That's the secret. All right. 
Dispersed energy is always weaker than focused energy. If you desire something, you have to go all in. Go hard or go harder. Giving 100% isn't only about effort. It means giving up 100% of your old self to become your new self, which is more attractive to that which you say you want. When I say give 100%, I'm not just talking about effort. I'm not just talking about what you do with your body, what your to-do list looks like. Giving 100% means sacrificing 100% of your old self to become your new self because you cannot pour new wine into old wines or else they will burst. The number one thing you have to do when you truly desire something is you have to give up all of the old limiting beliefs that were blocking you from getting it anyways. It's not about adding family. The first step is actually about subtracting. Subtracting is another form of sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice? It's going to cost you something. It may, may cost you some old beliefs. It may cost you some old behaviors. It may cost you some old friends. It may cost you some actual money. What are you willing to sacrifice to get what you need? I don't want money. I need money. I'm, I'm confident in saying that. I don't want money. I need money. The reason money flows to me and through me so easily is because I need it. Money is a requirement for me based on who I am, just like oxygen is a requirement for me based on who I am. I've developed a relationship with money where I relate to it in the same way that I relate to oxygen. I trust and know that it is coming to me. I do not worry about money. Why? Because I know and trust my mother, father, God knows that I need it to do the work that they that it or they called me to do. I need money. It's not something that I want. It's not something that I'm chasing after. I need it to do this work that I was called to do. A marathon runner needs more oxygen than a couch potato. And the universe provides oxygen exactly according to each individual's needs. The marathon runner's greater need didn't cause the couch potato to have less. So I've told you this before. Wealth consciousness is when you relate to money in the same way that you relate to oxygen. Wealth consciousness is when you relate to money in the same way you relate to oxygen. At no point yesterday and at no point this morning have you ever thought, is there going to be enough oxygen for me? You knew that the creator breathing through you was going to provide you. Whether there was a marathon running outside at this moment, it didn't matter. Even if there was a marathon running outside your front door right now, you would not worry about whether you were going to have enough oxygen. You just trust. This is what wealth consciousness is when you can relate to money in the same exact way. Again, the marathon's runner, greater need for oxygen in that moment didn't cause the couch potato to have less oxygen. Some of you still have a limiting belief that money is limited. Now, money in its physical form is limited, but there is infinite imposs possibility of ways to get money and create money up here. Yes, there is only so much in the actual money supply in terms of cotton-based money and the coins that we have. There is a limited amount of that. But when you look at credit, right, the fact that the banks only have to keep 10% on hand, they now get to multiply the money that they have in physical possession, right? by 10 with the money multiplier. And then the next bank does that. And now money actually becomes infinite based on the credit system, but more so even based on the credit system, based on our imagination. This is why the GDP continues to grow because things get more and more expansive. Money is not shrinking, family. Money operates the same way. The reason most people don't have a million dollars, listen to me, the reason most people don't have a million dollars is because they don't need it. The reason most people don't have a million dollars is because 
They don't need it. If I looked at your vision board on your 18 by 24 poster board, it does not require you to have a million dollars. Going on a few vacations a year does not require you to have a million dollars. Getting that house that you want does not require you to have a million dollars. It may be a million dollar home, but the mortgage payment doesn't require you to have a million dollars. Getting the car that you want doesn't require you to have a million dollars. You don't need a million dollars. This is why you don't have it. Now, the moment you create a vision that is big enough that requires you to have a million dollars or results in you having a million dollars because you've helped so many people, then you'll have a million dollars. But right now, your vision is, this is why I say vision boards are selfish. Most vision boards only are about you. They're about the selfish desires that you have, the external things that you want. So you don't really need a million dollars to have that car, that house, and those trips. You don't need it. This is why you don't have it. Now, once you created a vision that's big enough, that is in alignment with your creator, that requires you to have a million dollars, guess what will happen? A million dollars would naturally appear in your life and in your reality and in your experience. If I gave most of you a million dollars right now, you might use 200,000 of it to pay off some debts, but then the other 800 would be sitting. Stop me when I'm lying. Because you don't have a need for it. And money does not want to sit. It is called currency because it's supposed to have a current. If God gave me a million dollars right now, I would know exactly what to do with it. It would be used within the next 72 hours. It would all be earmarked. Not to pay off bad debts. It would be earmarked to actually create a new heaven on earth, a new possibility. Shifting from want to a need, shifting from a want to a need is important because a need has more desire than a want. You realize that a need has a more desire than a want? When you need something, like I need oxygen, if my oxygen supply were to get cut off right now, you would see me gasping for air. Because why? A need is greater than I want. A need is greater than a want. It has more desire. And when we talked about desire, desire is one of the most powerful aspects or emotions because it is so highly charged. So we need to elevate something from a want to a real need, not a made up need. Oh, I need this kind of car. I need this kind of house. No, a real need. Why do you need it? People will do more for what they need than what they want. What do they say? A crack fiend needs a hit, right? And a crack fiend will do everything in their power, wake up with nothing and find a way to get the money to get their hit. But here you are, you are not addicted to drugs and you aren't willing to do what you need to do for what you say you want because it's a want, it's not a need. They need a hit. So every day they wake up and they find a way to get money to go get that hit. But you don't have a need that is that great at this moment in time. This is precisely why you don't have the things that you say you want. Because they're not needs. We're on page 344 right now. Middle. An easy way to tell if you need money is to ask yourself, if I received an extra $1 million windfall today, do I know exactly what I would do with it? You want $1 million, but you don't need it. If I gave you $1 million right now, what would you do with it beyond fulfilling your own immediate needs and those of your immediate family? Most people would have more than they need in the moment with just $200,000, and then the other $800,000 of it would spoil in a savings account doing nothing. Over time, you may find way, uh, a way to give that cash consciousness in a way that serves others beyond you and multiplies it to do more good and God in the world. But at this very moment, you don't have a real need for $1 million. And that is exactly why you don't have it yet. That's exactly why you don't have it yet. You don't always get what you want, but do notice how, you all, how all your needs get met. If you didn't get everything you needed, you wouldn't be alive right now. The body's basic needs are not that much, water, food, and warmth. The reason you don't have more is because you really don't need more at the moment. As Matthew 6, 8 says, do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. 
the story of God sending down manna or bread to the Israelites when they were wandering through the wilderness captures how God provides according to our needs. Exodus 16, 16 through 20 reads, Moses said to them, this is the bread which the Lord had given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather as much of it as he what? As much of it as he what? As he needs. Take an omer for each person according to the number of people each of you has in his tent. The Israelites did so and some gathered much of it and some only a little. When the, they measured it with an omer, he who had gathered a large amount had no excess and he who had gathered little had no lack. Every man gathered according to his need. So even he who took more had no excess. So if you are given and you have excess, that means that you didn't actually need that. In fact, this is how nonprofit budgets work. Nonprofit budgets. If I and I, because I used to run a nonprofit. If you have a nonprofit and let's say you got one hundred thousand dollars from a foundation. OK, if you only use seventy five of it that year, then when you go back for funding the next year, they will not give you one hundred thousand. They will only give you 75 because you wasted 25,000 that could have been used to do the work, to do good or do God. That's how they will perceive it. And I actually like that methodology. That methodology can actually require you to be more impactful or it can actually encourage you to be inefficient because some people will now waste that $25,000 just so that they can get it again next year. So it's actually there's a nuance there. But this is in many ways how the universe operates. OK. We're at the bottom of page 344. Oh, no, we're, excuse me, we're on 345, bottom of 345. In this case, every family's needs, oh, excuse me, let none of it be left overnight until the next morning. But they did not listen to Moses, and some left the supply of it until the morning, and it bred worms and became foul and rotten, and Moses was angry with them. So some of you have excess right now. You have excess. Some of you have $100,000 in your account and it's just sitting there doing nothing, operating at 0.03% interest in a savings account. And what you'll notice is that all of a sudden your car breaks down. You have a roof leak. Things will start grabbing at that money because it's just sitting there because you aren't doing enough with it. So that money just finds its way to leak out. Oh, now you got this tax bill. Now your friend needs some money uh, or your mother needs some money to, for help with her mortgage payment because her taxes went up. You'll see things start grabbing at that money because it was just sitting there doing nothing anyways. You had excess that you did not know how to deploy and you were holding it in the bank account as a false sense of security. You see, it's the same thing like a musician. I've seen this with musicians often. They'll make all this beautiful music and it will get stuck on their hard drive. They won't put it out into the world. And then what happens to their computer family? Crash. Crash. Now they mad at Apple. They mad at Microsoft because their computer crashed. But that music that was supposed to be out in the world was sitting there for six months anyways, and they didn't do anything with it. So God was like, hm, shut the computer down. I'm going to give this inspired song to somebody else who's going to get it out into the world. That's how it works, family. The crashing of the computer didn't happen to you. It happened for you. It wasn't some devilish spirit. No, you didn't take the creation that God had given you, the energy that God had given you to make this beautiful music, and you didn't put it out into the world. So rather than letting it sit like sitting in a savings account, God said, let me give this song to somebody else. Because for whatever reason, my child here is locked and is not willing to put it out. So I'm going to take what I've given it and I'm going to give it to somebody else who will multiply it. Okay, we're at the bottom of page 345. In this case, every family's needs were met according to the size of their need. This is what I call divine democracy. Divine democracy. It was divine democracy, which is fair and just. No family was supposed to have any leftovers. And notice how there was no grumbling about how this family got more than our family. The idea of lack only comes as a result of comparison to someone who has more. 
But if their needs are greater than yours and they too have no excess, what is there to be jealous about? We have a family of two. They have a family of seven. Both families are supposed to get $100,000? No, each family gets according to their need. This is divine democracy. So they should get more because really what determines the need is how much excess is left over. And if no family has excess left over, then guess what? That is divine democracy. What is there to be jealous about if it is all used? When those who tried to save the manna or bread out of fear of God, not providing the next day, the bread, bread, worms. This speaks to why we should not sell money, which is also known as what? Bread. We call money bread. The parable, the metaphor applies directly. When you save it in a savings account, it gets worms. Not only are you only getting 0.03% interest, right? But you're also getting negative 8% due to inflation. So this $100 is now only worth $92 a year from now. You are letting it spoil by not using it. The only money we keep in a savings account is our emergency fund. Once our emergency fund is saved, all money should be in play. All currency should have a current after you saved up your emergency fund. When we do it, it rots in the bank because of inflation. We're on page 346 now. And we have three more pages. At the top of 346. Think of God as your angel investor. Would you ever walk up to an angel investor and ask for more money? They would laugh at you and ask, more money for what? When you look at a number chart, the more is not a number. No investor will ever invest in you without you being very clear about how it will be used, the amount you need down to the penny, and the return on and timeline of the investment. Luke 14, 28 says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? The same goes for God. God doesn't give you more for your own safety and insecurity. God gives and invests freely in children of God who are in alignment with its will and bringing heaven on earth. God continues to give to me and through me because it knows, listen, listen, the reason God gives to me and through me is because God knows that the buck does not stop here. See, when God gives to some of you, you say, oh, I got something. I'm going to put it in my pocket and I'm going to save it for a rainy day. When God gives to me, I said, thank you, God. I'm going to use this and deploy it right now on your behalf. So who do you think God continues to give more? The person who takes it and hoards it and buries it in dirt, like the parable of the talents? Or the person who takes it, this stored energy, and actually uses it to bring the kingdom of heaven on earth? Who do you think God gives to more? So God doesn't just give to me. God gives to me and through me. My, my name is not on this money. I don't own this money. All the money that is in my account right now, it is God. I don't call it my money. It's not my money. It was given to me freely by the creator for being in alignment. That's why I got it. Being in alignment and being a good steward. And so the better steward I am over $1 million, then God gives me $2 million. The better steward I'm over $2 million, now God gives me $4 million. Now I'm a, I've shown that I'm a good steward over $4 million. God gives me $8 million. And so you're wondering where your money goes? It goes to people who are better stewards of it than you. Where's all this money at? The money is with better stewards, family. It's not a hierarchy. You can improve your stewardship too. If you become a better steward, you will find that you have more money. It's not a comparison thing. It's not, oh, they're a better steward than me. No, we are all meant to be good stewards of the energy that is in our body and the energy that we are holding as stored energy. This is nerd spiritual substance that we call money. The better steward you become, the more abundance you will have. You haven't shown good stewardship over $5,000 yet. You have not shown good stewardship over $10,000 yet. So why would you get a million dollars? 
God knows that the buck does not stop here. It knows that that stored energy will be transmuted into something positive when it gives it me. It knows that as soon as I get another dollar, another unit of stored energy beyond that what beyond that which is in my own body, I'm going to use it for good or for God. You get what you require, not what you desire. A requirement is more powerful than a desire. We're taking it up another level. To whom much is given, much will be what? Required. Luke 12, 48. Has a double meaning. Not only will more be required of you, okay? Not only will more be required of you, but your requirements will also increase. Not only will more be required of you to whom much is given, but your requirements will also increase. This is why my team that is behind the whole multi-family movement and rich and righteous, my team, it keeps increasing in size because my requirements are increasing. The impact that God wants me to make on the world is greater and greater and greater. So my requirements increase. Do I worry when I hire another team member? No. Because I know that the resource that I need from the source, the resource that I get from the source will be increased to support that team as long as I stay in alignment. A requirement is something you need, whereas a desire is something you want. All you have to do is hold your breath for as long as you can get the uh, as long as you can to get the feeling of a requirement. OK, in that moment, you require oxygen. When you immerse yourself in an unselfish vision, you heard that when you immerse yourself in an unselfish vision that is so vivid and valuable that it feels like a requirement, you will witness money or economic oxygen easily come to you from customers, clients, investors, sponsors, partnerships, lenders, donations, and manifestations from God to breathe life into the vision. I'm raising money for two companies right now, and the money is just flowing to me. I went to a conference, met a woman. She has $100 million to deploy from her clients. And guess what? Without me working for it, I now have access to $100 million that I can now channel as a good steward towards entrepreneurs and ideas that I believe in. I didn't work for that $100 million. She doesn't have all the ways needed to deploy it. So now I get to be steward over that by being in relationship with her. It is coming to me from so many directions because of the visions, the unselfish, unselfish visions that are here are greater than me. And God knows that my requirements are higher because this vision is a requirement for me. This world that I want to create is a requirement for me. It's not just a nice little want. It's not even a desire, right? It is a requirement. I, I require that this happen in my lifetime. We're at the top of page 347. Yes, I require that we become the richest family in the world, the wealthiest family in the world. 100,000 people with a million dollars of net worth would be $100 billion. That would make us the fifth wealthiest family in the world right now. I require that. It's not just a nice little vision that I have that I talk about. No, I require it. And I'm willing to dedicate the next 30 to 50 years of my life to making that vision come forth. It's a requirement for me. When somebody's telling you their vision, you can tell if it's just a little nice to have or if it's actually a requirement. You can hear it in their energy. You can see it in their eyes. Is that a requirement or that's just a little nice to have? We're on page 347. There's a difference between being needy and having needs. You hear me talk about this all the time when we're talking about people giving, how you ask for a free copy of the book in the Facebook group. You hear me talk about this all the time. There's a difference between being needy and having needs. Needy repels what you desire. Neediness repels what you desire. And a real need attracts it. You want to make your desires or wants real needs like water, housing, and food. 
Not wanting anything is one of the keys to attracting everything you want. Not wanting anything is one of the keys to attracting everything you want. Something becomes a greater need when you reach a point where you will do whatever you need to do to get it. Are you willing to do the hard internal work of transforming yourself from the inside out and become who you desire, who your desires come to easily and effortlessly? Let me ask that question again. Are you willing to do the hard internal work of transforming yourself from the inside out and become who your desires come to easily and effortless, effortlessly? When we try to bypass the process, that leads to debt and slavery. A slave is someone who is steadily living above value earned. Everybody type that. Slave equals steadily living above value earned. I'm trying to live up here, but the value that I've actually earned is down here. That creates debt. So then that's what makes me a slave. A slave is someone who is steadily living above value earned. You want more. You want to receive more than you've given. You want to receive more than you've given. This is how you end up in bondage. This is how you end up in bondage. Someone will give it to you, but they'll give it to you on credit or debt. And now you are indebted to them because you wanted to receive more than you had given. A slave is someone who is steadily living above the value they've earned. So we need to increase the value we've earned. If our lifestyle that we desire or want or need is here, then we have to, we have to create value up here to be able to get that. But some of you have a lifestyle that is here that you want, but the value that you're actually creating in the world is down here. And so you're willing to fill that gap with debt, with credit cards. You needed that high, you needed that high end car or that big house before you actually earned it and therefore had to take on debt. And now you are bound by the image you projected. We talked about projection. You go on Instagram, you post that you got this nice house and now you got this nice car. You posted that to show other people who didn't really need to know and probably don't even care. But now that you posted this image, you think now you have to live in alignment with that image. Now you got to get the clothes to match that car and that house. Now you got to get the jewelry to match that car. and that house. Now you got to go on the vacations to match that car and that house. Now you're projecting this entire image when deep down inside, if I look at your balance sheet, you have negative net worth because you care too much about what other people think. Nobody thinking about you, boo. Nobody, you, you, know how many, you know how many problems people got going on in their heads? There's nobody thinking about you. I'm sorry. That may sound kind of mean. There's nobody thinking about you right now, family. Nobody's checking for you like that. That's all in your imagination. People got too many problems going on in their own life to be thinking about you. That is you thinking about them thinking about you. That's coming out of your imagination. That's coming from your projection. Nobody's thinking about you. Nobody's lurking. Nobody's watching your every move or your post. There's like five to 10 stalkers out there in the entire world and they ain't stalking you. They ain't stalking you, family. You important in God's mind. You're not important in that in many other people's minds, family, except for those who really, really love you. OK, I'm not talking about those who really love you, not thinking about you, but all these other random people who you think are thinking about you. They hating on you. They watching your stories on Instagram. No, they're not thinking about you. They happen to click on their stories and yours came up. They're not, they not checking for you, family. They don't care where you went. They're not looking at what you wore. They're not checking the price tag of what you wore. They don't care about your car. They don't care about your house. They don't care about your man. They don't care about your woman. They don't care, family. That's your own self-importance. You so self-important that you think other people think you're important. You're not. Dang. 
You needed that high end car, or that big house before you actually earned it and therefore had to take on debt. And now you are bound by the image you've projected. This is why one credit card is named MasterCard. Because once you spend above your value earned, you now have a new master and another one is called Visa because your money is about to take a one way trip away from you and leave you with the emotional baggage. I don't know if you caught them bars. This is why one credit card is called a MasterCard because once you spend above your value earned, you now have a new master and another one is called a Visa because your money is about to take a one way trip away from you and leave you with the emotional baggage. <laughs> bars okay last paragraph on 347 you must learn to discern between wants and desires versus needs and requirements you must be clear about your requirements because each level require a different uh different being and doing which leads to a different having Rather than saying, I want a lot of money, you must get more specific because money alone won't motivate you for long. Write down the things you want and why and calculate the cost of that lifestyle. Now you know the exactly how much you need and you've converted a general want into a specific need. From there, ask yourself, what are the feelings that I believe these things will give me? And then ask, what can I do right now to feel those feelings? Get full of the feeling now. This is how you make your first million dollars mentally. And if you're able to hold that vibration long enough in faith, it must manifest materially. While I want you to have more than a million dollars, the questions from the game show, the question from the game show was, who wants to be a millionaire? The key word is what? It is B. Notice the question was not, who wants to have a million dollars? It was who wants to be a millionaire? Because once you are being a millionaire, guess what? You will have a million dollars. Being is the access. Being, doing, then having. Become a millionaire because of who you will become, not just what you will have. The reason I want you to become a millionaire is because of who you will become along that journey, not because you will have a million dollars. Who do you have to transform into for a million dollars to naturally be in your space, to be in your environment, to be in your account? It was likely not the same person that you are today. And what I'm excited about in my own journey and what I'm excited about for you is who you must become to shed this old self that you are in, right? And actually become a millionaire. Instagram shut off because we reached the hour mark. Let me go back. Are you understanding that it is not about the, the trophy? The million dollars is just a trophy at the end of the road. This is really about who you become. And what I believe you become is you become more aware of the fact that you are a child of God and therefore that abundance is your birthright. Last paragraph on page 348. Your needs or requirements of yourself simply aren't high enough or don't encompass everything you desire to experience. When you need something, you don't wait for the conditions or people to change to make it easier for you to get it. Instead, you change your self. You become better. You become more focused. You become more creative. You become more valuable. The easiest path to everything you want is through you, not someone else. The easiest path to become to everything you want is through you, not someone else. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. <laughs> this is about to blow some of your minds. I'm going to read this again. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father 
but by me. I need to show you something. Give me a second, y'all. You ready for this, family? Watch this. I want you to get a mirror, and I want you to read that to yourself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by who? By me. By me. The only way for me to get to God is through myself. It's through myself. If Christ consciousness is the highest aspect of who you are, and we are supposed to have the mind of Christ, then, and Christ has said that we are, who is my mother and my father? Whoever does the will of the, uh, of the father is my brother, is my sister, is my mother. Then no man cometh unto the father except through who? Through me. Through me, family. Read that to yourself in the first person as if you are Jesus. And it is an I am affirmation. And you will gain a deeper understanding that the way to everything you want is through you. It is through me. It is through myself. It is not any external entity. The way is through me. The path to everything that I want is through me. It's through me, family. It's through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And only I can come to the Father. The only way to get to the Father, the Mother, Father, God, is through myself. If anybody has deceived you or led you to believe that you must go through something outside of yourself to get back in oneness with God, atonement, at one mint, then you've been misled. And this is probably why you still are struggling in the way that you're struggling because you're looking for pathways outside of self. But the only answer is through me, through you, through yourself. <sighs> heavy, 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 heavy. Everybody type through me, everything you want. It must come through you, family. Every dollar that you want, every vision that you want, every idea that you want, the house you want, the car that you want, the life that you want, it must come through you. Through you. It's one of the most empowering messages ever. That I, that I don't have to rely on something outside of myself, that I've been given this beautiful mind by God, this temple up here, and I can have everything I want, regardless of what other people think or feel, but it must come through me. Whoo! That ends today's reading, family. For those of you joining us on Instagram, Instagram cuts off at an hour, so this is why it cut off at 9.30. So you can always join us on YouTube if you ever have issues with Instagram. Um, this has been a blessed, blessed reading. Uh, we are in chapter nine now. Tomorrow, we're going to read How Much Do You Charge? We're going to be on page 349. We're going to read How Much Do You Charge? Um, if you would like to get a copy of the book, you can go to moneyandmanifestation.com. Again, that's moneyandmanifestation.com. You get five copies for the price of one. Uh, one copy is for you, four is for you to give to others, to stimulate your personal economy, for you to elevate your level of giving as you give, so you shall receive. So if you want to receive more, you have to give more. Um, you also get the rituals workbook when you get order the set, and you also get the audio book. Um, for those of you who are in a temporary state of lack, you can go to our Facebook group at facebook.com, at facebook.com forward slash groups, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash rich and righteous. And uh, there are people in the group who are actively looking to give away extra copies of their book. Okay. This is not for freeloaders. This is not for people who have, but want to act like they're in a state of lack and ask for something for free. 
This is literally for people who are in a temporary state of lack, right? And need a jump start to get back into the level of abundance. So you don't ask from a place of neediness, you ask from a place of genuine need. I need this book. I know it will transform my life. And once my external world, my material reality reflects what's going on in my mind, then, and I'm in a state of abundance, I will pay it forward and do the same for other people. All right. So the Facebook group is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash rich and righteous. There's no reason that anybody here should not have a book. Um, there are so many of you have bought the set. So, and I know some of you are giving them to people who, who are actually in your actual lives, but uh, there are many people who are also gifting the books to strangers like yourself. All right. So that concludes our reading for today. I wish you a blessed and abundant day. Remember that everything that you desire must come through you. We'll be back here tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, please set a phone alarm if this is uh, added value to your life. Uh, we are here every weekday at uh, 8.30 a.m. Eastern. All right. Love y'all. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.